For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2017 Men's Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday evening, October the 13th, 2017. Randy Ritchie is the speaker of this service teaching on unforgiveness, unholy judgment, and dangerous vows. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. It'll always look for How many know ain't nobody perfect? So who's going to teach you that? Where are you going to find a teacher? Because there won't be any if you're looking for flawless men. But we got men who belong to a flawless Savior. Body of Christ that are good people loving the Lord. And they can teach us. And we should test everything. By the Spirit of God against the Word of God. Without being critical. Because how many in this room thought you knew something and now you don't? Yeah. Or you had to change what you thought you knew? Okay. <laughs> Satan and his imps are more than willing to help us sin. If we give place to sin repeatedly, we'll take on a corresponding spirit of darkness to help us to sin. If you want to walk in lust, you're going to get a spirit of lust. Anger, anger. Fear, fear. Unbelief, unbelief. Rage, rage. You continually let the sun go down on your wrath, you're going to get a spirit of anger. If you engage continually in sexual sin, spirit of perversion. If you allow yourself to be fearful instead of trusting God, listen, I've done this teaching, I keep quoting it and going back to it. Thank you, Lord. But he established the thing by two with our free witnesses. So listen. If you make a practice of dominating or manipulating people, you'll get a spirit of control. On and on down the line. So listen, the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath, right? So if you get mad at 10.30 in the morning, don't wait till 6.59 before the sun goes down to get rid of it. Uh, just because that it says that, that's legalistic. The minute you know the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, start dealing with it. That's what I, I mean. And my wife and I, listen, so listen, sometimes we can feel ourselves getting on each other's nerves, so we start going... <sighs> We get, I forgive her, she forgive me, we're getting ready to eat, demons ain't coming. Alright? Yes, so, immediately, at the first offense, at the first moment of offense, if you make it a lifestyle, you'll never have to worry about the sun going down. If you make it a lifestyle, it means the minute you feel offense, you're saying, I forgive them, Lord. I release them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Then when you don't have a part in me. Because I can't afford to be offended, neither can you. When people take on a spirit, the spirit of unforgiveness, fault finding, when they take on a fault finding spirit, they become very harsh and critical of everyone and everything. They become legalistic like the Pharisees that were so quick to point out the disciples were eating with unwashed hands or that Jesus cured someone on the Sabbath. Fault finders always have issues. They're grumblers and complainers. They usually can be scoffers. And people can be the brunt of their sarcasm. Now here's some reasons for fault finding. Prayerlessness. You know it's kind of hard to fault people when you're praying for them. If you're really lifting them up to the Lord. Prayer keeps us focused on the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. Brings forth the fruit of the Spirit. Calls us to overlook faults and flaws of others and respond to people in a righteous way. Prayerlessness has the opposite effect. When we don't pray, we begin to notice every fault and flaw of our brothers and sisters. Everyone irritates us. We become critical and resentful of how they treat us, even when they haven't intentionally done anything to hurt us. A lot of times when people come to me and say they're depressed, first thing I'm going to ask them, who are you mad at? Who did you let the sun go down on your wrath? Oh, the door for heavens. You put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heavens. Joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you've got accusations out there against people, the door's wide open. Heaviness can just cling right on you. So you have a series. It's first disappointment and then discouragement and then depression. 
So when people disappoint you, if you deal with it at that stage and forgive them and let it go, you won't get discouraged. But if you don't deal with it and you get discouraged and then you don't deal with it, then you end up with depression. You have to come away from worldly, fleshly desires when we stop living for the flesh and gossiping and fight for and fault finding. When we stop living for the flesh, gossiping and fault finding, we'll leave our lives. If we live for the flesh, we'll always find something to complain about. There's another sin called familiarity. Okay? Familiarity is you got a brother's rights or sister or your wife and you see their faults. So then they come along and got a word straight from the throne but you're not going to get it because you don't judge them and not forgive them. Or even you've been judging your pastor and not praying for him. And he might have even been off. Could have been off. If he's consistently off, you need to talk to the Lord about what to do. But nobody's perfect. But if we get in judgment of and familiarity, that doesn't happen with the stranger. That happens with people you know and love. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, maybe your wife got in the flesh a week ago, and that's you hadn't fully dealt with that. And then she comes along and she's telling you something, and it's straight from God, and it just goes. You ain't got an ear to hear that. It can cost you. Even a lost person can be used of God to bring correction. Understanding and knowledge by the Holy Spirit. We must have an ear to hear. Ask the Lord if you've done this and repent if you need to. Listen, I've had people correct. I, listen, I've had people come to me and speak things to me that they didn't do it nicely. But out of that was a measure of truth. And the Bible says if your accuser accuses you, take it to the judge. Hmm? Lest you be carried to the jailer. <laughs> so when that person did that, first thing in there is go, okay, Lord, I repent for me. I forgive them. But Lord, that was truth. <laughs> there's truth. Is, is there truth there? Because if there's truth, what do you want to do? You want to deal with it. So you forgive them for their nastiness. Listen, this is for if you're a married man, hope you get married. This is what the Lord. My wife and I, I'm not going to go into detail of that, but I'll just say this: for our first time, Lord used me to help get her delivered. All right? Then we got married. And everything changed. And then it was World War Three or wonderful for three years. Heaven or hell, no neutral ground. <laughs> and so even though he used me to help get her delivered, I had wounds inside that even she was really jealous. And she, she's given this testimony here. This is public record, okay? So I'm not exposing my wife because I protect my wife. Okay? But the testimony of Jesus is that that inherited jealousy was a nightmare. And, if she was, and as soon as it, she would jump on her and accuse me, I wasn't doing anything. So I'd get angry. And jealousy and anger are twins. And so when that jealousy would jump on me, I'd respond with fire. It was terrible. And one day I went to the Lord and I said, it doesn't matter what she says, the problem's mine. It's my problem. And he began to show me how to fix it. And he did fix it. Amen? So, here's how he, one of the ways. So the fire would start, right? Being fired at. So instead of returning the fire, I would disengage and I go over here and I say, Father, forgive me. So I'm not pointing the finger at her. Forgive me first. Head, head of the household. Forgive me, Father. I repent. And I repent for my wife. Because we're one flesh. And I'm the head of the household. I priest in my house. So I, I forgive her. And devil, I find you jealousy. And I find you anger. You have no part in our marriage. And Father, I'm asking you to speak to your daughter. Right. And you know what? I'd give it a few minutes and the Holy Spirit would say, okay, go in. And I'd go in there and tell her how pretty she was and all of it was gone. So you can intercede for somebody else rather than turn the fire. So it works. It worked in my marriage. But it'll work anywhere. You get God involved, things change. It's got to be real. Like I said, I went for me first, right? Stop pointing that finger. Because as long as I was pointing the finger, you know what he'd tell me? Well, you married her. <laughs> yeah. I didn't make you. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't make you. 
And he wasn't casting something in her as if she's less than. He's just telling me, quit basically, you know, man up. I trusted you with her. There you go. Yeah. I trusted you with her. She never known anybody like you. She knew that first three years somebody like that. She's been abused all her life. And those demons wanted to kill us. And they came close. Now here's what I got the picture. This is bonus territory. I'm just going to tell you. I got the picture of this. You fight with somebody. Listen. So the devil started off, and you say something, and then they say something, and you got a pea shooter, and then a then a 22, and then a, a 270, and then all the way to bazookas and nuclear war. But the demons started off, and they're going, "I got mine going. You get yours going." And then we're fighting, and they're sitting back here looking, going, "Boy, this is fun, man." <laughs> As they watch us destroy each other. I got tired of that. So if you're a married man in this room and you hope to be married, listen to me. Divorce is not an option. There are times, I mean, listen, there are crazy things that happen, and sometimes people have to, but if if it's just different, listen, it shouldn't be your option. You shouldn't speak it. And you got to die to yourself to be a man of God. Times you try, you treat her like Jesus loved the church. That means, like the man said, if she want to go to the ballet, John Wayne, go ahead and go. Don't fall asleep. Why you think? You might need to. You know, you're supposed to dwell with her and not us. Okay? Supposed to dwell with her and not us. And do battle for her. Okay? I got tired. So, so if you're not going to divorce and murders out of the equation, right? Both those don't. Right? Then the only thing that's happening is the devil's stealing your time. Time is precious. we got a short amount of time on this earth. How much time do you want to give the thief? So be, listen, be quick to repent, be quick to forgive. All the days of your life. Be quick to repent, quick to forgive. Repent for me, forgive for others. Once you get to deal where you've forgiven yourself and you're living in the righteousness of God. Amen? Quick to repent, quick to forgive. Ingratitude. Most people with a critical spirit are ungrateful for their own blessings. Critical people are miserable people. They've lost their joy for living because they failed to see all the blessings God has bestowed on them. The Bible says all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Philippians 6. I firmly believe that thanksgiving is attached to prayer and supplication. It's difficult to have a consistent attitude of gratitude without a heart of prayer. You want peace beyond all understanding in Philippians 4, 6 right there. It says when you come to the Lord with your supplication and thanksgiving, you'll have a peace. If you're not thankful, there's no peace. Some of us need to check up from the neck up and to get rid of the stinking thinking. Anybody here ever have any stinking thinking? Say, Lord, help me. Amen. Let's look at the religious spirit. It says, relating to or manifesting faithful devotion to an acknowledged ultimate reality or deity, relating to or devoted to religious beliefs or observances, scrupulously and conscientiously faithful. Now, that don't sound so bad unless what you're devoted to isn't of God. Unless what you're devoted to is out of religion and not relationship. And ritual and not relationship. So if, should we be to go? We should be devoted to God. But is the God that you're devoted to, one you made in your own image, the one you like, or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That's revealed by His Word. Let's look at religion as the enemy. The first characteristic of a religious spirit is powerlessness. 2 Timothy 3, 5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is wholesomeness of spirit, soul, and body. The word of God is quick and powerful. It has creative life. Another characteristic is to always focus on the negative things that are happening around you. It's a tendency to see our primary mission as tearing down what they believe is wrong. The religious spirit has an inclination to see more of what is wrong with other people or other churches than what is right with them. I can tell you it's right and wrong. But are we fighting for people or condemning them? 
Third characteristic of a religious spirit is manifested in a person that is always trying to fix what's wrong with other people as if they were appointed by God with this mission. Fourth characteristic. The fourth characteristic of a religious... Man, let me tell you something, man. You can see a lot of things wrong. I see a lot of things wrong. The Lord's given me the gift of discernment. Most of what I do with it is done from afar. In other words, I pray. When I see something. But if He tells me to, I'll go direct to the person. It's only got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? The fourth characteristic of a religious spirit is the sense that we're closer to God than other people. Or that our lives and ministries are more pleasing to God. Fifth is the tendency to compare ourselves to others which we think are less spiritual, thus building ourselves up while tearing others down. It works in reverse as well. You lift this one up over here while tearing yourself down. I always tell people, throw your checklist away. Throw your checklist away. You know the one that says, I'm doing all this right? Which invariably causes you to look over there and say, well, look at that guy. He ain't like me. <laughs> Or the one that says, look at this one over here and how all oh, that was so good and I'm just a worm in the dirt. Both positions are wrong. We're to live our life in Christ Jesus being quick to repent and quick to forgive and just walking in the grace of the living God. And if something's wrong that I'm not doing well, I need to go to my Father for healing and deliverance. Amen? Help. So jealousy is the sixth characteristic of a religious spirit. This is a tendency to be suspicious or oppose new movements, churches, or ministries. Sometimes it can attack family members who are trying to draw close to Jesus. How many men know that when you uh, began to move close to the Lord, maybe some people didn't agree with you? Any of that happen to anybody? <laughs> I love my blood family, but I'm going to say right now, I've got brothers and sisters in Christ that are closer to me than my blood family. Because one's an eternal family, and even though I love those people, I do love them. I want them to join the eternal family. Amen? Amen? But the closeness is closer to the how can two walk together unless they be agreed. You're not going to be able to walk with, with blood members that are opposed to God. You love them. And you're looking to win them. And you honor them. But that doesn't mean you walk with them. You're not in the same boat. Seventh characteristic of a religious spirit is a mechanical prayer life. When you start feeling relief when your time is over praying, you might be motivated by a religious spirit. Eighth characteristic of a religious spirit is doing things in order to be noticed by and accepted by others. Now listen, I always tell people this. If you are afraid to sit in the front row, you need to sit in the front row. And if you want to sit in the front row to gain attention, you need to sit in the back row. Until uh, you get into such place where it don't matter front, back, or middle, you just go hope glad to have a place step. <laughs> so you overcome the fear by moving to the front row, and you overcome the pride by moving to the back row. Pride is fear of not having something anyway. Mm-hmm. Fear of how somebody may perceive you, and it needs attention, and it needs to be magnified. But they're both rooted in fear. The ninth characteristic of a religious spirit is glorying more in what God has done in the past than what He's doing in the present. Focus on the past. Your destiny is aborted. You are stuck. Ten characteristic is keeping score on our spiritual lives. I spoke that already. How about God uses me to preach, teach, heal, deliver, give identity and value from works. It's even stealing God's glory. All glory goes to Him. So, listen... When you know who you are in the Lord, you're healed and you're whole. You don't get your value by what you do. You get your value for what He's done and the price that He's paid and who you are in Him. When your value is set in Him, you can let people disagree with you. It don't bother you. But when you're not healed, and you're still operating in rejection, somebody doesn't agree with you, you feel it's taken away from you. Your person. So you got to find them. When you get healed, you, those territorial fights quit. Other major characteristics are inflexibility. People who are unwilling to change. Unwilling to change the time of the service. The day you meet. The color of the carpet. And on and on. Perfectionism is a major component of a religious spirit. Perfectionists cannot tolerate mistakes or failures in themselves or others. 
constantly sitting in judgment of others because they have a spirit of judgment and criticism that is at work in their own lives. Legalism. People who try to control or regulate or cover their problems by following a list of rules and tradition imposed on them by religious systems. They'll also insist that others agree with their opinions. Those that do not will be shunned or assaulted. Excessive guilt, which motivates a person to work for God, to be accepted by Him as a covering for His sin, is a major component of a religious spirit. Listen, the Catholic Church taught penance. Some of you may be Catholic here or have Catholicism in your background. We need to break all that. It's not a God, we don't want it. But penance is trying to pay God back. How much money you got? What do you have? The only way you pay him back is off your body as a living sacrifice. Here I am, Lord. I love you. What I have is yours. But you're not paying him back. It's just due service to one that paid the price you can't pay back. But if you've got that penance, that religious spirit of penance, you never feel at peace with God. Because you're always trying to pay Him back. You can't do it. So we've got to break that. He just wants you to walk in His grace. Grace in your own life. Grace for others. Do you feel like you've been wrong? Do you want that person to receive justice for what they've done to you? This may very well be the working of religious spirit. Remember, religious spirits are more interested in justice and punishment than mercy and forgiveness. I'm going to say that again. More interested in justice and punishment than mercy and forgiveness. Feeling this way is actually a form of pride because it holds you up on a righteous pedestal while it sees the other person as a sinner who deserves to be repaid for the wrong that they've done. This ain't saying that people don't need to be punished for crimes. Hopefully correct is, but we, we do more punishment. People, if you, you, you know, you have to have the law. You know, the only reason that we have the law and soldiers on this earth is because men won't behave. If men behave, you wouldn't need all that. But they won't behave. So you've got to have the law. And it's of the law. But do you hold someone and want them to pay when we've been forgiven? We've got to quit that. Dangerous vows. Say, Lord, all who will. Say, Lord, am I wanting somebody else to receive punishment while I receive mercy and forgiveness? I'm asking you to show me. In Jesus' name. And then there's inner vows. There are thoughts in your mind that you may speak to yourself. They can be spoken out loud, but they're born out of a judgment. Most of the time from childhood, but it can be later in life. The vows I'm referring to bring bondage. They're what we utter ourselves and and others about our lives. For example, a person might say, I will never be like my father. And that might not have been all that. The devil takes advantage of young people that are unguarded by their parents. We don't forgive our parents. Mom, Dad, let them go. We want to be free. We don't break those unholy judgments. We want to be free. But we want to be real. And say, just, you know, so if I am sinned against and sin touches me, well, I have to forgive the one that sinned against me. But then if I go on a pattern of sin because I was touched by sin, I've got to account for me. The first thing I'm going to do is release those people. But so, I will never be like my father. I will never marry a woman like my mom. Many have found themselves married to somebody just like their mom. And then you find yourself looking in the mirror going, man, I'm just like my dad. Because you judge not, you shall not be judged. In the same measure you judge, but be measured back to you. I will never do that. And then you do it. No one will ever hurt me like that again. So you add to somebody... Maybe you were married to him. Maybe it was a girlfriend. And she really did you wrong. It was hell on earth. And then she was gone. Or you really loved her and it was good and then she was gone. And you made this statement that says, I'll never love anybody like that again. Hmm. And when that happens, you got a wall up now. Because the enemy builds a wall. Stronghold. 
you might have a wonderful, awesome life. And you can't really love her. And you can't give her what she needs because you've got the wall up. And you can't receive from her. And maybe you made that judgment against your dad and you can't even receive from our Father in Heaven the fullness of what He has for you because your dad showed you something that makes you think that God is like your dad. Or the Holy Spirit is like your mom. The Holy Spirit is a He. But He comforts, He counsels, He teaches, he, He's a comfort. And that's what a mom is. Maybe you made some vows and you get rid of those things. The vows are ongoing without a finish line. They place you in bond bondage. They might seem positive because you don't want to be like that. But they work a curse in reverse. Because you don't want to be an abuser. But because it was born out of judgment, and if you judge not, you stop being judged in the same measure you judge with being measured back to you, you find yourself being an abuser. Or you're not like that, but the work is a work of the flesh. Not in the spirit of the living God. By the grace of God, you're not doing what you said you wouldn't, but it's a work of the flesh still born out of that unholy judgment that needs to be broken. Promise twofold. First, such a vow is being said as if we have the power to fulfill it. Truth is, we don't possess that kind of power. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can change or sustain a new life. Most of the time, the person actually becomes like what they judge. You get placed in a vicious cycle of once again trying to fulfill that personal vow. I'll never do that again. It becomes bondage. We vow not to be like somebody. And so we're fighting that instead of focusing on Jesus and freedom and becoming like Him. We need to, well, we need to become, we want to become like Jesus and let His character flow in. Not like the specter of what we determine not to be. <clears throat> Instead of spending our energies trying to live a not like life, we should strive towards be like God sees me like. We spend more energy trying not to fail than trying to succeed. It's bondage. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's not. It hampers our relationship with God and with others. God said, you heard that the ancients were told you shall not make false vows. This is but she shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. This is Jesus talking. But I say to you, make no oath at all. Either by heaven for his throne of God, or by the earth for his footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem for the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond that to evil. We cannot change those things about ourselves. Without dying, how many decided what color your hair was going to be? Or how much you have? Or don't have? <laughs> Just thank God, whatever it is. I used to listen before I even knew the Lord. Way back in the day, I had a friend. He, he, he'd been my partner in business for many, many years. But early on, we were pretty carnal and running, doing what men do. And um, he, uh, he would kid me about uh, my hair turning gray. And I could, could kid him about losing hair. And in a year, my hair went about that far. And I just said, well, I'm going to quit that. Because I do. And it don't matter. Hair, no hair. Who cares? I heard the bald-headed guys say they only, God only put, uh, had made so many perfect he- heads and the rest he put hair on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We're all going to get a new body one day. Amen. That's the one we're looking for, right? How many know you're getting older? How many know it ain't like it was when you was 20? Huh? No matter what we vow to ourselves, we do not have the power to fulfill it in a sustained way. We need the Holy Spirit to set us free and change us. When we surrender to Christ, we're called by His name, and our life will be transformed into what He calls us to be. That is true freedom. So what are we to do, man? What are we to do? Isaiah 52, 2. Shake thyself from the dust, and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. All who pray with me, pray with me now. Say, Father, I confess that in the past, 
I held unforgiveness, sometimes bitterness, and resentment in my heart against certain people who hurt or disappointed me. I now recognize this as sin and confess it as sin. For you have said in your heart, I'm sorry, you have said in your word that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I repent for unholy judgment against all other human beings and renounce the self-given right to judge other humans with self-righteousness. I repent for all of my ancestors who have done this. I break every curse associated with these sins and renounce the agreement with the accuser of the brethren towards others and myself in Jesus' name. I break all unholy soul ties with people I have judged as well as those who have improperly judged me in Jesus' name. I exchange their image for the image of Jesus Christ and command all foreign souls to leave me down. I break all demonic bridges between me and these people and command every unholy, unclean spirit which came through the sin and soul time to leave me in Jesus' name. I now freely forgive all these people and ask you to bless them if they're living. If they're dead, I hope they're in heaven. I also forgive myself for all my faults and failures, for you have freely forgiven me. I repent for accusing myself and the idolatry of making my opinion of me more important than your word. Jesus, your blood is enough for me. Thank you, Father, for freedom from the load of unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment in the name of Jesus. Father, I confess to you in the past through ignorance, through curiosity, or willfully, I came into contact with unholy religious activity. I repent for me and my ancestors for this sin, and I receive forgiveness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I renounce religion and every lying spirit that contains the form of godliness but denies your power. I renounce it in Jesus' name. I renounce error in Jesus' name. I also renounce and confess the sin, any oath which I have taken or my ancestors have taken by any false god and any idolatrous practices in which I have been involved. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I'm closing any door which I or my ancestors may have opened to you and your demons in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of family destruction in the name of Jesus. I release myself from the hole of any religious spirit strong man in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of religion to loose their hold on my life in Jesus' name. I confess as sin and renounce any vow that I or my ancestors have made, both inward and outward. Now, if you know a vow that you made yourself, just speak it, say, I renounce it, I break it, just speak it to yourself and break it. I'll give you a moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You break those vows in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You didn't even have to speak it. You just had to think it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say, I break, I break the bondage, bondage 
Jesus. He's found. He's found. In Jesus' name. Jesus. I declare that my identity is not based on trying not to be someone, but rather to be who God intended me to. I declare freedom to feel, to be real. And to be me, who God wants me to be, by the blood of Jesus, and in Jesus' name, I declare and decree that I am free from all these unholy vows, and free to be who God intended to be. And I command all spirits to enforce those vows, believe me. In Jesus' name, Jesus. take a deep breath. Every spirit enforces those vows. Let God's people go in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you. Come out of God's people. Now, in Jesus' name. Let them go. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And every other spirit whose legal rights have been broken, Jesus comes out today. Come out of them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, I break every curse of family destruction, and I release myself from the hole of these spirits. I give leave to all those familiar spirits. And now in the name of Jesus, as my brother in Christ, Calls out these demons. If they're there, they have to go. If they're in me, they have to go. All who Jesus ordains to go today, and all like spirits that Jesus ordains to go. I agree. They have to go. So now just breathe, men of God. Unforgiveness, let them go. Resentment, come out. Resentment of father. Resentment of mother. Go. Resentment of wife. Go. In the name of Jesus. Resentment of siblings. Go. In the name of Jesus. Go. In Jesus' name. Hate. Bitterness. Root of bitterness. Revenge. Retaliation. Go. Arthritis. Go. 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 Come out. Come out of this gallbladder. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Go. 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 The gall of that. The nerve of those people. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Get out. In Jesus' name. Go. In Jesus' name, accuse of the brethren, go. Self-hatred, get out. In the name of Jesus, say, I reject self-hatred. I accept me this day as a gift. My person as a gift from the living God to me. No longer to be rejected. Now, self-rejection, self-hatred, self-condemnation, go. Go. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Take a deep breath. Come on out of them now in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Up and out. In the name of Jesus. Go. In Jesus' name. All autoimmune disease spirits. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Go. Holsters. Go. Unholy judgment. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that enforces the vows. Go. Religious spirits. Pharisees. Go. In the name of Jesus. Retrayal. Every spirit that betrayed, I break your power. In the name of Jesus, I pull those hammers out of their chest when they got those unholy words. When they saw the unholy deeds, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I command the trauma to come out. In the name of Jesus, trauma from words, trauma from deeds, trauma from betrayal. In the name of Jesus, let them go. Trauma that came in as a little boy. In the name of Jesus, trauma that came in the womb. Get them go. In the name of Jesus, go, go, go. Trauma from the accident. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. Let them go. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I say I break. The threefold core of anger, anger, hatred, anger, and murder, murder, and disappointment, and discouragement, discouragement, and depression, murder, and offense, murder, and anger, murder, and rage. All of you go. In Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath, Father. I thank you for your angels that swing their swords and cut all those cords. In the name of Jesus. And root up those spirits. Anger, hatred, murder. Leave God's people. In the name of Jesus. Go. Along with fear, doubt, and unbelief, I break your power too. In the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. Say I repent. For all religion. And all fear. Doubt. And unbelief. I break that threefold cord. Command those spirits to go. Along with the evil heart of unbelief. 
In Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath. Let them go. Go, 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 go. Come up and out. In Jesus' name. Fear, doubt, and unbelief. Let them go. Anger, hatred, murder. Let them go. Discouragement. In the name of Jesus. Disappointment. Discouragement. Depression. Heaviness. Come out. In the name of Jesus. God have given us a spirit of heaviness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the oil of joy, the oil of gladness. In the name of Jesus. These men will put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So heaviness, go. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let them go. In the name of Jesus, rage go, disgust go, violence go. In the name of Jesus, backlash go. In the name of Jesus, go. Every spirit of territorial defense, get out now. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. Mourning go, grief go, death go, lying spirit, spirits of death, death from idolatry, death. In the name of Jesus, let them go. Death in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. The wages of sin is death. They repented, so I repent. For all generational sin. For idolatry. Witchcraft. Shedding of innocent blood. And broken covenants. And I command all those spirits to go. In Jesus' name. Now take breath. Let them go. Go, 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 go. Death from idolatry. Death from witchcraft. Go. All witchcraft spirits. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Death. Death. Death and shedding of innocent blood. Pass the children through the fire. Break their power. In the name of Jesus. Come out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Pharmacia. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Pharmacia. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. That death from the drug use. I break your power. Witchcraft from the drug use. We break your power. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Melt. Get out. Crack come out. In the name of Jesus. Go. Cocaine. Let them go. In every spirit of addiction. Every spirit of bondage. Let God's people go. Alcohol. Go. Sexual alcohol. Go. Sexual sin. Get out of there. Get out, perversion. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Let them go. All spirits of immorality, perversion. Let them go. Everyone Jesus wants out tonight. Go. In the name of Jesus. Now judgmental. Self-righteous. Religious pride. Critical spirit. Legalism. Perfectionism. Division. Error. Unbelief. Now, let them go. Take a deep breath. Go. Confusion, go. In the name of Jesus. Let them go. Confusion, come out. In the name of Jesus. Go. Confusion, let them go. Let them go. Thank you, Lord, for civil war in the enemy camp, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you are not the author of confusion. The devil is. So we lose confusion into the enemy camp. Let him turn on himself, Father. Thank you for your angels swinging their sword, rooting these things out, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Salvation by works. We break your power. False holiness. False humility, we break your power. Condemnation, go. Kill. Say, Lord, Lord, you took my guilt. You took my shame. You took it to the cross. It doesn't belong to me. I wear a, a garment of salvation and a robe of righteousness. Shame has to go. In Jesus' name. Take a deep breath, man of God. Let him go. 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 Every spirit blossom from the Father is a good, good Father. I break your power. Let him go. In the name of Jesus, go. Intolerance, go. In the name of Jesus, externalism, go. In the name of Jesus, religious murder and mission. Go. In the name of Jesus. Condemnation. Go. Catholic spirits. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. That of the rosary. That of the Pope's infallibility. That of worship and Mary. That of the holy water. That of the Catholic baptism. In the name of Jesus. Go. 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 Let them go. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. That of worship and saints. I break your power. In the name of Jesus. Come out of God's people. In Jesus name. Thank you Father. Religious coldness. Robbing God. Selfishness. Unloved and unloving and pretense, cheating, falsehoods. Come on out of God's people. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of hatred of truth, come out. In Jesus' name. Spirit of Nimrod, let him go. Spirit of Semiramis, let him go. Spirit of Tammuz, let him go. In the name of Jesus, come on out now. In the name of Jesus. And Isis and Osiris and Horus, let him go. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. Every carpenter, in the name of Jesus, criticizer, hypercritic. Nitpicker, condemner, denouncer. Say, I renounce every spirit that would nitpick me and cause me to nitpick others. You gotta go. In Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let them go. In the name of Jesus, go, dead picker, denigrator, derider, detractor, assailant, attacker. Come on out now, in the name of Jesus, condemner, get out. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 crucifier, criticaster, hair splitter, get out. 
Quit her, admonish her, get out in the name of Jesus. Harang her, rail her, rent her, rebuke her, let them go. In Jesus' time, come out of God's people. Grouch, grouchy, grumbler, whiner, scolder, upbraider, bellyacher, complainer. Say, I repent for any complaints. For being a complainer. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to give you glory. So, Korah. Cora, leave me. Complainer. Griper. Go. Go. In Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let him go, men of God. Now, Father, I thank you. Those spirits and every other spirit. Cora, come out, grumbler, complainer. In the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Now, fear. Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear, fear of godly authority. I break your power in the name of Jesus. You fear who calls them to criticize godly authority. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Every spirit took on the name of their father. I break your power. Come out of them in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Every spirit took on the name of their mother. Go, 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 go. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, raise your hands to heaven, men of God. Raise your hands to heaven. Raise your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, Holy Spirit, fill me. I'm asking you with perfect, perfect love, which cast out fear. Fear me with the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of wisdom and counsel and might and understanding and knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Everywhere the enemy's left. And I give you permission, Lord. My daddy, Yahweh, my Abba, in Jesus' name, to raise me to where you want me to be. I trust you in the process. I give you permission to heal my heart where it's been broken and to tear down the walls. I trust you, Lord. I want to weep with those that weep. I want to rejoice with those that rejoice. I want to be like you, Jesus. So my hands are up. My gates are open to you, Yahweh, the living God. I receive it, and I believe it. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to rewrite my cellular memory, to repair my DNA, and heal my body of any infirmity. I now demand infirmity to go in Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath, man of God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Take a deep breath. Brother Kerna, Brother Nikki, Brother Kyle, come up here, please. If you would. Uh, any man that's here that uh, wants prayer for his physical body, just come on up to pass it around here. And, uh, and uh, just find a man here and we'll pray for you. Amen. So if you've got a place that you need your physical body, you can come on. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.